you know what you should do. You should follow me on Twitter at Brummer018. Link in the description. Do it now. Hello everyone, welcome back to another FIFA 20 video today. Brahma18 here, thank you for joining me. Apologies for the delay it has been in video. It's been a few days since we've released um, and upload, but we're back. And today, with the news that Jose Mourinho is uh, joining Tottenham Hotspur as manager after the sacking of uh, Mauricio Pochettino, I thought it would be a good time to dive into one of his tactics. And we've had a lot of requests. We've had the, the Chelsea one requested, Porto. Uh, we've had... Had, um, Inter Milan and also Real Madrid as well. So many for each one. So I just had to pick and I thought, well, let's just go with Real Madrid. I've already done Chelsea. Did think it'd be right to do Inter Milan when we're doing an AC Milan series at the moment. So we've uh, we've chosen Real Madrid. And, you know, what a tactic this was. What a system that it played. Broken many records at the time uh, for the most goals, the most points, etc., um, and surprisingly, despite winning the uh, La Liga title, didn't quite cut it in the Champions League, which was a surprise considering you know how um, how all rounded this tactic was and, and really ideal it was. Based on counter attacking, um, deadly, absolutely deadly, very very fast on the break, but also underrated for the other elements as well, the pressing at times, the ability to seize control of matches. And uh, so today, what we're going to do, as we do in all of the uh, videos in this series, um, I will show you how to not only recreate this tactic, but also how to adapt it slightly so that it will actually work in game. Um, and there's going to be things I'm going to show you today that you're not going to associate with a Mourinho tactic, but it's true. And, you know, he gets a lot of criticism, wrongly so. Um, and there's a lot of sort of preconceptions about Jose Mourinho that he's his defensive manager. It's everyone behind the ball. It's drop back. It's just defensive, out, all out defense. Um, and it's not quite the case. You know, it's not quite the case. So today, we're going to try and, um, you know, sort of change some of those preconceptions of him. So, first of all, we will come on to the, I guess, the player, base player positions. A couple of things you want to change. You'll want this 4 2 3 1. You want to go for the 4 2 3 1 wide. That was the system. Um, and ultimately, what you're going to want to do is these fullbacks are a little bit too wide. You see, they're actually wing backs. What you want to do is you actually want to bring these back in um, and change these into regular right and left backs um and then uh well, well we'll come on to why in a minute trying to get him level actually it's a little bit annoying um so yeah you've got that and that will be the only change you want to make to the base positions we will then move on into the player instructions so we start off with the goalkeeper and essentially just work our way up the pitch so first of all with the goalkeeper um you wanted to come for crosses this is where it's adapted slightly for fifa um with the goalkeeper coming for crosses it's quite hard to defend them on this game, um, particularly when you're you're facing someone who's got runners coming from deep, and, and some people do choose to use those uh, set piece tactics. So with the goalie coming for crosses, it just relieves a little bit of pressure um, off you. In terms of saving outside the box, you can just put this on balanced. You don't really need to change this to, to sweeper keeper unless you're finding that um, you know you can see a lot of balls coming over the top and stuff. Um, but when it was Casillas uh, in the Real Madrid side. Um, it wasn't really that style of keeper, so just keep that on balance for now. In terms of the two centre-backs, they are absolutely fine how uh, they are. One thing I do point out in every video, and I'll do it again today, unless specified um, you know, in particular, uh, keep the interceptions on normal. There is actually going to be a couple of players today who we will change them to aggressive, and I'll come on to that and explain why. Uh, but generally, keep them on normal, otherwise it will drain your stamina moving on to the fullbacks now there's a little bit of a change in role usually uh, you have these symmetrical but we're going to alter it a little bit today now what happens in a Mourinho system is that let's say one of the fullbacks goes forward and overlaps so let's say in this system um, it would be Marcelo and Arbeloa so let's say Marcelo bombs forward on the attack what would happen is is um, instead of the other right back also getting forward, and you'll find this in a lot of systems, uh, England the other night actually um, very, very prone to doing this, and it does leave them vulnerable at the back. Usually what you'll find is the other fullback will venture forward as well. But what happens in a Mourinho system is actually if one goes forward, so Marcelo uh, overlaps, uh, our below it would have been in this case, um, will actually tuck in. He'll stay back and he'll tuck into defence and form a back three. 
And the reason you do that is it just leaves you more solid, leaves you less open um, on the counter. And like I mentioned, England as well, what, what they tend to do is throw both fullbacks forward, overlap, they'll leave the two centre-backs and the holding midfielder back. And then they get exploited because of that. What you need to do is... And what Mourinho does is he'll leave one fullback back and he'll tuck in and he'll form a free. So how we're going to replicate this is you're just going to change one. And depending on the team that you're playing with, you can obviously choose. In this case, we'll just go with Marcelo. So with Marcelo, we'll have him to join the attack and we'll have him on overlap as well. But with the other fullback, it's Carver Hall in this case, um, we're going to have him stay back while attacking and also inverted. And that's the best way to try and recreate him. Just playing as an inverted fullback, but also just tucking in, like I say, forming a back three. You'll also have the protection of the back two. And that's the little subtle differences that you'll find in a Mourinho system uh, that just make it more solid. But people think it's very much just all part of the bus but it, it's not quite the case like I say there's just little subtle tweaks here and there to give it that more solidity so with uh, with your right back or your left back whichever one you want one of them get them overlapping and the other one staying back and just tucking in forming that back three Next up, we move on to the holding midfielders now. So one would have been uh, Jabby Alonso and the other one would have been um, uh, Sammy Kadira. So we're going to keep it how it is. We're going to say Casemiro is Kadira. He's going to be your more defensive-minded player, whereas Modric will be the Jabby Alonso, like the deep-line playmaker role, as we like to call it. So they're very much similar in their roles, but there's going to be one slight change. So first of all, with the deep-line playmaker, this would have been Jabby Alonso. You want him to man mark, you want both of them to man mark. Not only was this a style, um, is it still a style of, of Mourinho systems um, to be very much, to be as tight as possible and to do that, um, you know, you man mark your opponents, you mark people out of the game, but also in FIFA it helps as well because you'll find a lot of runners coming from the opposition midfield going on into the box and they won't have someone following them. So if you man mark, you track those runners more. So that's very much a Mourinho uh, system. Uh, we'll set them both to man mark now actually. Um, and then you also want them both to stay back while attacking. Now, a massive feature of this system was uh, when playing on the break, you'd have the front four, you'd have the striker, the two wingers and the attacking midfielder bombing forward. Um, maybe, well, usually Marcelo as well in a lot of cases. But then you'd have the two centre midfielders would stay back and they would offer that protection. That's very much what it was about. It was about um, uh, winning the ball back. Sometimes hot the pitch, but generally um, sort of in that middle third. And then they would say Chabi Alonso would allow um, players to run on forward. He'd find them and then the front four would um, work from there. So it's very much about these two midfielders staying as part of a rigid tactical uh, shape. So you want to keep them on stay back while attacking as well. If you tend to find that they're still going forward and you don't really want them to, you can have them to drop between defenders or at least one of them. Um, and then, you know, that can help you a little bit as well. They will definitely stay back then. It will just change the system a little bit, but it should be okay if you have them on stay back while attacking. In terms of defensive positions, you want both of these to cover the centre as well. The reason being is that not only are you going to have one of your fullbacks staying back or usually usually two, um, but also these wingers come back on defence as well, and we will get onto that shortly. Um, so you're going to have that more protection on the wing, so you don't need them to venture out wide. You want them, like I say, to stay rigid, to stay part of that robust tactical system, and therefore you want them both to stay um, to cover the centre. But the one difference between these two holding midfielders is you're actually going to change the interceptions, and the reason being is that you want to change the way they play. So for example... Kadira was the, the aggressor. He was more of that ball-winning type player. So you want to change him to aggressive interceptions and you'll find him closing down people a little bit more, chasing the ball more and trying to win the ball back. Whereas with uh, Modric or, or Chabi Alonso in that case, you want to change him to conservative interceptions. There, Therefore, he'll be doing a bit less running, a bit less chasing the ball, and his job is very much more to um, to offload passes once he gets it, really, um, and then to stay in that robust tactical shape. So when needed, he can do the dirty work, but generally, um, you know, you want him to be... That sort of deep line playmaker. So change them, them roles there. Now we move on to the midfield. First of all, we'll come on to the wingers. They are both. Uh, they will both have the same roles. So in this case, it would have been generally Cristiano Ronaldo and um, Angel Di Maria as well. Hazard playing the Ronaldo role, Bale um, Di Maria. So 
You want them both to come back on defence. That's fairly self-explanatory, of course. Um, you know, you got that two banks of four, and they are pay playing a part of that. Now, moving on to chance creation, you actually want both of these to cut inside. Now, what would happen is it's very much a free roam style um, system with the four attackers. So, with the whole, the, all of the defence, the back four, and then the two holding midfielders being robust. And being solid and keeping and maintaining their shape, what would happen is the front four, when they burst out on the counter-attack, they'd very much be rotating over the pitch. And that's going to be replicated in this system. So you'll want these to cut inside. And then the way in which you're going to best replicate this counter-attacking system and breaking at pace is getting behind. That means you're always going to find them on the run, looking to penetrate the defensive line and get in behind um, you know, immediately as soon as the likes of, uh, well, Modric in this case, uh, all the centre-backs, etc. are winning the ball. So that's how you're going to replicate um, you know, that counter-attacking style along with that sort of free roam. And in addition, you want them to get into the box for the cross as well. Again, fairly self-explanatory. You would find um, the likes of Ronaldo, Di Maria, and also Ozil and Benzema, it would have been in this case, you know, bombing on forward into the box. And it's going to give them more drive as well, um, more desire. You're going to find them making runs. And trying to penetrate the, the offensive bat line even more so with getting to the box for crosses. So that's the two wingers sorted. Like I say, identical um, instructions. Now we move on to the attacking midfielder. This would have been Mesut Ozil um, in this case. And um, again, there's quite a few roles that you want to look at. So first of all, with defensive support, you actually want him on basic. Now, what happened generally is that really they'd have their two banks of four, which would be, you know, these... These uh, these eight here, they'd form the two banks of four. And then what would happen is you'd find the striker generally stays forward, actually. Whilst he is press pressing in moments and he's staying behind the ball, um, at least in the uh, offensive half, um, what you tend to find is, is, say it's advanced beyond that point, you tend to find him being that outlet ball more, particularly on the likes of set pieces and stuff, he would remain forward and he'd be that outlet ball. And along with him, you would have Ozil. He'd be a little bit deeper, still looking to press, etc. But, um, you know, generally, he would stay forward and create that outlet ball. And then the likes of the pacey wingers, Hazard, Bale in this case, Ronaldo, Di Maria, um, would overlap him. So you actually want him on basic defensive support, which means that he's not going to be tracking back all the time. Um, but you are going to have those little moments of, you know, when he is needed, he can bed in. Uh, moving on to support on crosses, getting to the box of the cross again. Already explained that. Don't need to go into um, into detail there. And then positioning freedom, you want to change this to drift wide. And the reason being is that again, very free row orientated. You're making the opposition not know whether to stick with their man or stay in their zonal area. With the likes of Bale and Ronaldo. Um, excuse me, Bale and Hazard, or Ronaldo and Di Maria coming inside. Then you have Ozil who would drift out wide um, and create those problems for the defence. And um, in terms of interceptions, you also want to change this to aggressive interceptions as well. The reason being is that they would be the first line of defence. In lots of moments, you would find them pressing high at the pitch and people don't want to associate Mourinho with this but it's actually true the front two would be the first line of defense so you want to change it to aggressive interceptions and therefore that makes up for only having basic defensive support because you will still try and penetrate those well intercept those passes in between um, you know the defensive and the midfield line so you want to change that to um, aggressive now we move on to the striker in uh, Karim Benzema or Gonzalo Higuain. They're very much rotated and Higuain was very, very successful in this system as well. Um, first of all, you'll want to change this to drift wide. Again, we've already talked about this. What will happen is two wingers would come inside and therefore the likes of Ozil and Benzema would drift out wide. And it just creates that mismatch problem um, for the opposition defenders really. And also that sort of free roam style orientated uh, counter-attack. So you want him to drift wide. And then in terms of attacking runs, getting behind again, this is how um, you look to replicate that counter-attack. You want everyone running on forward um, and providing those outlet balls in behind the defence. In terms of interceptions, aggressive interceptions, it's similar with the Ozil situation. What you'll find is, is that um, you, know, you want him to be the first line of defence and therefore... If he's going to stay forward, which we are going to put that on as well, um, you know, you still want him to 
to be a defensive minded player and worry about the opposition sort of playing through the team. So you want to change that to aggressive interceptions and then it just means he's going to be the first line of defense coming forward. So that rounds off the player instructions. Now we move on to the overall tactics of the team. First of all, we start off with defense and we're going to change this defensive style to pressure on heavy touch. Um, again, like I say, and I've sort of alluded to it already, is people associate Mourinho teams with just dropping back and automatically being defensive, parking the bus. It's not, it's not true. It's just not true. Um, and it was very much replicated in this Madrid system. Very much they would be happy to sit back. They'd get the two banks of four going and they're playing the counter. But in certain moments in the game, they would be happy to press and go on the front foot. So this is how you're best going to replicate that. You're going to put pressure on heavy touch. So it means they'll preserve their shape. But in certain moments, let's say the game opens up a little bit. Uh, misplays passes etc loose touches um, and then you're going to start to see them press which means still going to have that sort of active minded um, attitude rather than being passive and just letting the team um, or letting the game go by them so you want that on pressure on heavy touch and then for defense you want to change this to free this means that it's going to be very very narrow um, and again that's very much um, a replica of a system that wants to be solid, doesn't want to concede lots of goals and wants to look to play on the break. You stay narrow, um, you be compact, therefore teams can't play through you, they've got to go out wide and it's just easier to defend crosses rather than, um, you know, say balls right through you, plugging those gaps. So you want that on three and in terms of depth, you want to move this up to seven. The reason being is that um, as soon as you move over to eight, then it will become a very, very high defensive line. Excuse me. Um, but if you move this up to seven, this will be the last one before it changes to a high defensive line, which again means you're sort of looking towards this pressure on heavy touching again. You don't want to be completely passive in the game, but um, you know you still do want to have that solidity. You don't want teams playing balls over the top of you. So if you move this up to seven, or excuse me. Uh, so if you move this up to seven, that will, um, you know, sort of counteract that and it very much plays into their hands. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much that sorted for the defence. Now we move on to um, in possession of the ball. In terms of offensive style, you've sort of guessed it, fast build-up. Um, and the instruction should hopefully mean um, that you're not going to find loads of players out out of possession and find yourself vulnerable to a counter-attack. What you're going to find is the two holding midfielders um, are staying back, as is one of the fullbacks as well. Um, and then you're going to have the likes of the right midfielder, left midfielder, um, and the two forwards as well will be getting forward as fast as they possibly can. So offensive style, fast build-up, very much counter-attacking system. In terms of offensive whip, you want to move this up to seven. Similar to the depth issue, really, is what you're going to find is it was very much wide, but you still want those short passing options um, here and there. And also, if you're attacking, if your offensive whip is like this, but then your defensive whip is like this, you're going to find that they're going to be expending a lot of energy simply trying to um, to get that narrow um, you know, that narrow shape back rather than, you know, doing their jobs and, and reacting to the situations in game. So if you move this to seven, um, you know, that very much sort of, um, you know, eradicates that issue for you. In terms of players in the box, already sorted for us. This is on seven. Um, it means you're going to have three to four players in the box generally. Uh, and that's really what you're looking for. You know, you've got your four attackers. Maybe one of them's whipping the ball in. If not, maybe you've got him in the box as well. And um, say Marcelo is, is whipping a cross in. But that's very much what you're looking for. Players in the box, um, you know, seven. Then it still leaves you um, solid at the back. You haven't got too many players storming into the box um, and leaving you vulnerable on the counter attack. Meanwhile, in terms of corners and free kicks, what I always do, and we've done with every video in this series so far, is we move these to four. And the reason being is that then you will have enough players in the box um, to be a real threat from corners and free kicks, but then you will leave two men back as well and another one on the edge of the area. Um, so, you know, you're not really vulnerable to that counter attack because um, people aren't going to leave more, certainly not going to leave more than two men at forward, but very usually they'd only have one man up front. Um, so, you know, you're able to shut down that counter-attack um, if and when you get a set piece. 
So, that will just about round it off for this video, guys. This one, I think, is a little bit longer today than what they usually are. It's very much a complex tactical system, as are a lot of uh, Mourinho, well, all of Mourinho's tactics down the years. A very intelligent manager, and it's very much replicated in the way his team's set up. I hope you've enjoyed this video today. If you do have any questions about the tactic, do feel free to let me know. Um, uh, ask me down below in the comment section, and you know I'll, uh, I'll get back to you and answer as many questions as I can. Don't forget to keep leaving your suggestions. Uh, I've got loads trying to work my way through the list, but we will continue to do that. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, by the way, if you've enjoyed this video, um, for more regular gaming content from the likes of of FIFA 20 and also leave a like on the video if you've enjoyed it as well let me know that you are enjoying it and that you want to see more on that note we are going to finish it off there thank you so much for watching everyone and I'll see you next time Come on.